to begin my welcoming remarks by letting you know, as you probably are beginning to feel, that this is not a typical juvenile justice gathering. Who you are, and therefore what makes CJNY, because we are you, represents something very different in these times. We come together to talk about the new America. Unlike the Tea Party folks, we don't want our country back. Instead, we want our future now. <laughs> CJNY, as represented by you, is multiracial, multicultural, multilingual network that includes parents, young people, community members from small towns, big cities, southern hills, western mountains, and indigenous lands. It is this intentional diversity in CJNY that makes us so strong, so unique, and so necessary. We are vital because we are now. This room is what this nation is becoming. People of color make up 43%, 43% of all Americans under 20 years of age. By 2042, people of color will be the majority in this country. We all know, however, let's not get too geeked up about that, because we all know, however, as Frederick Douglass quote that we all know, power concedes nothing without a struggle. And believe me, there is no doubt that folks that see this nation as a white nation, and especially white folks in power and with money that comprise the decision-making elites in this country will not easily cede power to the merging colored masses. Therefore, as you know, mass incarceration is a tool commonly used by the powerful as an instrument of social control. That's what we do. Right? Four million white people, 18 million black people in South Africa, incarceration as an instrument of social control. Reservations. You in CJNY spotted this alarming truth way before most people, and you have been fighting to defect, deflect the damage of the blunt instrument of incarceration and what it wreaks on our communities. So this gathering is important to the future of young people of color across this land. Why? Because it's the people in this room that understand and fiercely advocate for a shared set of beliefs and principles that each young person's life has epic significance. That young person of color living in communities of concentrated poverty deserve to be structurally included in all opportunities necessary to live in today's society. You in this room are the protectors of the next generation. You are the hope of stopping the rail to jail in this country. Even if our nation has not awakened to the facts and don't believe people in power know anything, they're not that smart. You know better. You have the power to relate, and this is what I want to talk to you about today. You have the power to relate to a young person, and that relationship that you have with them may be the last hope prior to extinguishing the fire of intellectual curiosity or of a life of incarceration or some other crushing deprivation. We are here to motivate bodies and touch souls. That is a power greater than those of us, those of them that would hold us back can ever have. They do not have the power of relationship. But you in this room have it, and I want you to appreciate and celebrate your efforts in that regard. There is an African proverb that says, if you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping in a closed room with a mosquito. Bzz, bzz. We are the force that folks in power 
are starting to worry about and pay attention to. But they're not letting you know that. As Shaka said earlier, do not underestimate your power. And you will be hearing about it in this next day and a half. From our small beginnings of just eight programs, we have grown to over 140. 140 programs that have joined this network to do two things. Help each other continue to exist by sharing information, experiences, best practices, love, and support to folk like you doing similar work. That's big. And the second thing is to advocate, plan, and agitate on behalf of youth of color in trouble with the law. And we have done this big in CJNY. We have become a national force and a voice for youth of color in the halls of power and in the corridors of the power elite. You will be hearing about some of this work in sessions coming up later today and tomorrow. You will hear about how New York CJNY folk have gone from not being heard to being consulted in decision making. During this conference, you will hear how CJNY folk in Chicago are stopping the school to prison pipeline. How CJNY members in Boston have proposed legislation to reduce youth of color in their systems. And I bet you if you talked to them four years ago, they would say, we can't do this. They can do it. They are doing it. You're going to have parents organized in Louisiana and other places to demand humane treatment for their children because of this and other organizations. You're going to hear how young women demanded appropriate treatment for girls. All these efforts started with just a small group of people coming from the streets, putting in work, bringing the noise, and rocking this shit. As we gather today, there is much that compels us to be unified, militant, visionary, and most importantly, transformative. As the nation suffers the worst global economic crisis in almost 100 years, and in many places elects those that would do us harm locally, we must locate ourselves in the struggle of our youth, families, and communities. The CJNY is about strong, consistent voices speaking to the power elite. The CJNY is about a movement to bring together indigenous people to stop this addiction to incarceration this country has and to bring our young people home where they belong.